August, this number rose from 7 to 32 states that reported lower collected samples than the preceding months. This illustrates that despite the increased diagnostic capacity and improved access to testing, the demand remains low with not enough samples being collected. Therefore, the recent reduction in cases in some states could be attributable or attributed to the law testing that is taking place in those states. I want to enjoin an appeal to the subnationals at this point to ramp up their testing because we right now have an installed capacity of testing of 15,000 samples on a daily basis. There is no reason why our testing figures should continue to decline. Nigerians will all recall that at the onset of the ease lockdown, the Presidential Task Force drafted a three-phase strategy of easing the restrictions ahead of a full reopening of the society and economy. In determining what phase of the strategy to move to, the Presidential Task Force tried to balance the public health considerations and also economic considerations alongside data analysis. The PTF believes that while Nigeria is not ready for full reopening of the economy, there has been sufficient progress to warrant significant further relaxation of the restrictions applied. Based on the foregoing, the Presidential Task Force today submitted its seventh interim report to Mr. President for his consideration and approval. The main thrust of the recommendation is that Nigeria advances to the third phase of ease restrictions with further amendments to address economic, social political, and health concerns. This will last till a time when the pandemic is sufficiently controlled in our country. Accordingly, Mr. President has considered and approved the following. One, transition to the third phase of the national response to COVID-19 for a period of four weeks with effect from tonight, 12.01 a.m. on Friday, 4th of September, 2020, in line with amendments to economic, to address economic, social, political, and health considerations reflected in the implementation guidelines. Two, continued engagement with states and local governments to improve community sensitization on the response and its attendant effects. Three, maintaining the current non-pharmaceutical interventions nationwide, that is the wearing of masks, maintaining our social distancing, personal hygiene by way of washing of hands of use of sanitizers, and avoiding crowded environments, and as much as possible, staying at home. Four, urging the state governments to work with local government authorities in their state to intensify necessary measures, such as contact tracing, grassroots engagement, and risk communication. Five, strengthening the collaboration between the federal and state organs to harmonize the country's COVID-19 response in the short, medium, and long-term basis. And six, introduction of sanctions, including the suspension of passports or denials of foreign travels for violation of current provisional travel-related quarantine protocols. Mr. President has similarly considered the fact that the six-month mandate of the Presidential Task Force would expire this month, particularly on the 17th of September, and has therefore extended 
the lifespan of the presidential task force until the end of December 2020. The objective is to sustain a robust multi-sectoral national response to ensure that we successfully navigate the community spread stage of the pandemic and three, strengthen our health system and other economic and social infrastructure to enable them meet our national aspirations. And fourthly, we are opening up our international skies. We are also making haste to allow our children go back to schools, particularly at the tertiary level and secondary level. There is need for the presidential task force to continue to navigate these processes.